put on a post this morning that I find it I find it a little bit sad if I was to give it energy, so I choose not to. Um, that people have jobs that they don't like, and in your or in our lives, work is a massive chunk of it. People work from 16, 17 years old to the uh, best part of sometimes now upper 60s, and that's increasing. And it blows my mind why people do jobs that they don't like all of their lives. Why settle for that? The universe has been here 15 billion years. You get one fucking chance. One chance. And some people spend their entire lives doing shit that they don't like. Spending it in a job that they don't like. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to expose a couple of things. Uh, also, I talked... Uh, this morning on the post about putting the lottery on so give me put in the comments if you uh, do the lottery do you do the lottery um, I stopped doing the lottery so probably about uh, what are we on now I stopped doing the lottery probably 10 years ago so I used to do the lottery as well I used to think wouldn't it be great if I won the lottery and then I could just escape and do what I wanted, uh, live a life of freedom. And then I got to a point and I thought, do I really want to win the lottery? A genuine question, that's what I asked myself. And I thought, no, I don't. I want to go out and I want to make my own wealth by myself. And I made a conscious decision that day to not do the lottery again. So if you do the lottery, you're doing it because you want to escape. There's another life that you want to live. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't be doing it. There's something that you desire bigger than what you've got now, whether that's um, you might have the best job in the world, but it might be that you want to put your kids through ed education. It might be you want to buy your parents a home. It might be that you want to give it away to charity. But what it's saying is you've still got a gap. There's a place between where you are and where you want to be. And that's why you do the lottery. So <clears throat> there's no need, guys. I'm teaching people from scratch that are making hundreds of thousands a year. That's in reoccurring revenue. That's not including capital. So there's uh, people now that have got uh, as, as much as six million in property that I've trained in over just under uh, just over three years. I've built six million quid. There's loads of them in my mastermind that I've got multi-million pound portfolios and they've done it from scratch. Um, and they're bringing in hundreds of thousands of years in a year in revenue. And just to put it in perspective, so the car that I drive and the house that I live in, uh, and I like to go on holiday four or five times a year, got a motorbike, um, I don't have to think about what I spend my money on and I only spend around about 120 grand a year. That provides that lifestyle that I live now, about 120 grand a year. Um, so you don't need as much money as what you think you do. If you're on 120 grand a year, you're actually in the top 1% of earners in the UK with 120 grand. Um, <clears throat> and it's not hard to get to that level in property. So I had HMO that I sold, and that one HMO was netting me, after mortgage, all expenses, 27 grand a year. And I was going there for an hour a week, that's it. Now imagine you've got four of them, that's over 100 grand. Um, and there's companies that'll take HMOs off you. So if you're the kind of person who thinks, I can't be asked dealing with tenants, then hand it over to an agency. There's people that'll take your properties off you for 10 years, guaranteed rent, they do all the repairs, and all you've got to do is check your bank balance once a month to see if the money went in. So keep hitting me up, tell me where you're from. Um, <clears throat> teach me and I'll pay times five your fee. Right, let me tell you why I would never do that. So the amount of people that message me and say to me, um, let me do the training for free, and then when I've completed it and I do my first deal, I'll pay triple or 
whatever, 10 times the amount of money back, or I'll give you a percentage every year? And my answer is no, because I'm not willing to work with people unless they've got skin in the game and unless you're serious, because people don't value what they don't pay for. So um, I'm a big believer in no one's given me nothing in life. So I came from uh, being brought up with my grandparents, between my dad and my grandparents. I uh, didn't do well at school and um, I was written off. My teacher said that I would never achieve anything. And everything that I've done, I've worked hard for. And I'm a massive believer and I teach this to my kids as well, that you're getting nothing for free. I won't give them anything at all unless they earn it. So I would never ever just give training away and cut a deal like that because it's not in line with my values. It's nothing to do with being greedy. It's nothing to do with me getting more money. It's in line with my values that if you want something from life, you work for it. Otherwise, you get results like the masses. Simple as that. Um, so that's the reason why, <coughs> Clive, I would never do that. So when people... Um, uh, I've had a school come to me recently. I'm going to go on to some bits in a minute, but I'll share this little thing with you. So I've had a, a local school in Redcar come up to me recently. And they're trying to generate 10 grand. And they've asked me, will I generate that 10 grand? Uh, and I haven't gone back to the school yet. I'm going to go back to them this week. So maybe there's somebody uh, from that school that's aware of this. And my answer is going to be, no, you're not getting one pence from me. However, here's what I will do. I'll happily come into the school. I'll sit the entire school down, the kids, and I'll talk to them about goals and how we break things down to achieve a bigger goal. So let's say, I don't know, there's 200 kids in the school. If there's 200 quid, uh, kids in the school and they're trying to generate uh, 10 grand, then work out the maths. How much would that be per kid? So let's say there's 200 kids in the school and uh, they're trying to generate 10 grand. Let's see whose maths are the quickest. First one to answer, come on. Who's the quickest? 200 kids in the school and they're trying to generate 10 grand. Come on, hit me up. Wait, I need to scroll down to my comments. 50, <coughs> well done James, you're the winner. Um, so if there was 200 kids in the school, they'd only have to get 50 quid in sponsorship each and that would achieve their goal. So what I'm going to say to the school is I'm not going to give you anything at all, not even a penny. But what I will do is I'll come into the school. I'll teach the kids about how we have one big goal and how we can chunk it down, i.e., 10 grand, big goal, seems a lot of money. But if we achieve just 50 quid each, then we'll get to that target. So I'll happily go into the school, I'll teach the kids about goal setting, and I'll teach them how to generate their own cash. Um, and again, that's not because I'm tight, it's because it doesn't sit right with my values to just go, there's 10 grand. I don't do it with my own kids. If they want summer, I make them work for it. It's as simple as that. Um, I always remember, so my dad's probably online because I'm going to take the piss out of him in a bit. So um, when I left school and I was uh, doing plumbing and roofing, I remember it got to Christmas time and there was bad weather and uh, my boss was struggling for work and he said, I'm going to have to lay you off for a week. And uh, that was on the Friday. He said, I'm sorry, we've got no work at all. I'm going to have to lay you off for a week. And on the Monday morning, and my dad will be laughing if he's listening to this, on the Monday morning, my dad came into my room, and it was the time that I would normally get up from work, and he didn't just come in my room and say to me, Stephen, uh, I want you to go look for work this week. He ripped back my bed covers, grabbed hold of me, pulled me out of the bed, bearing in mind it was only about fucking seven o'clock in the morning, and he said to me, you're going down the job centre and you're going to be the first person in that queue asking for a job. And I don't care what the job is, you're going to ask for a job and you're going to work for that week. You're not fucking sitting around on your ass. So that's what I was brought up with. Um, and, and I don't think that that done me any harm at all that my dad was that way with me. Uh, even though it was only a week that I was being laid off. So 
Although I wouldn't drag my daughter out of bed by the foot, and I probably wouldn't be as harsh as what my dad was, I'm a big believer in if you want something from life, then you need to work for it. It's as simple as that. Um, now, I want to help you all. So this is the reason why I've done these series of four. If you go back on this page, you'll be able to see video one, two, and three. So each week I've done one video, and you'll be able to see each of those videos. Um, and you'll be able to watch them all. And they're also on my YouTube channel as well. So I'm a big believer in if you want something from life, you have to work for it. That's essential. You've got to be willing to work. You've got to be able to put the graft in. And if you haven't got them, forget it. Um, you need to accept that your life's just going to be average at best. And I believe that you're all capable of a lot more than that. I believe we're all only performing at 10% of what we're capable of. So um, <clears throat> I think the average wage in the UK is 29 grand. And I've got people that I'm teaching that are making 29 grand from a single property. One property equals the UK average wage. And you don't need to accept that. I don't get why people have jobs that they don't like. Um, they're uh, accepting the putting up with things or they may be struggling to get by, they'd like a better life, they're putting on the lottery because they want to escape, and it doesn't need to be that way. Educate yourself like I have, learn, work hard, and you can have whatever you want, it's as simple as that. And I prove that with my mentees. Um, it's not one or two, there's hundreds of people out there making money who send me messages daily saying, you've changed my life. Um, now, I know I'm harsh, and I can be direct, um, and sometimes I do that on my, my messages, <clears throat> and that's not for any ego reason or anything like that, it's just my style, it's, um, I care about your results, and I care about you, and if I've got to give you a boot up the arse to get results, then I've got no issue doing that at all, because I know people will always thank me in the end when they've gone and got these properties, they've left work, they've come from offshore, uh, to do property full-time, whatever that is. So I'm going to start now. I'm going to share a couple of things with you uh, with a couple of myths in the UK. So hit in the comments box. If you're just joining in now, tell me where you're from. Uh, it's always good for us to have a look at where people are from. Tough love, exactly that. I can see a couple of comments coming in, so tough love. Um, <clears throat> so put in the comments box where you're from and... Uh, it's always good for me and my team to have a little look back later on. Let's share it. Come on, we're up to 123. Let's see if we can get a couple of hundred people online. So I'm going to start. I'm going to share a few things. I'm going to share to, with you why uh, there's a myth of um, uh, renting is dead money. It's not actually true. So there's two types of renters. And depending on which one of those you fall into, uh, depending on if you are better off renting or actually buying. So let's get the numbers up. Hit us where we're from and I'm gonna jump in, okay. Northampton, Sunderland, Doncaster, Scotland. Redcar, Sunny Redcar, one of my own, love it. Leicester, so we've got people joining from all around the country again. So <clears throat> I'm gonna share a few things, where should I start? I'm going to start with a conversation I had with my dad today. So, um, uh, my dad came around my house today, and I was taking the piss out of him, as we do. We've always had that rivalry. Um, he's attempted to start running, and uh, he stopped already because he just said it's too hard. He's getting injuries from it, so he's going back on his bike. Um, and then he basically said, I'll take the kids to the park for a couple of hours. So... My dad took the kids to the park for a few hours and I said to Gemma, I said, oh, well, let's go join them for a bit. So we headed into the park, kids were playing and uh, I was having a conversation with my dad about this building, the project that I'm doing and it actually uh, about to be finished and me remortgaging it. And I said to my dad, I've got a cracking rate with Lloyd Bank. They're doing a 3.1%, um, which is only 48 grand mortgage over the year. Um, which is very small considering this building will bring in around about 400 grand a year. So the mortgage is 48,000. There is other expenses on top of that, like the heating, lighting and bits like that. Um, 
<clears throat> but they only come to about 20 grand a year. So the mortgage is 48 grand. Now I said to my dad, the only thing with this mortgage is they'd only do a 55% loan to value, meaning that they would only put in 55% of the value of the building. So the maximum they were willing to put in was 1.5 million, 1.5 million. That's the amount of loan they were willing to give me. <clears throat> so I said to my dad, ideally I wanted 2 million back out of the deal. Um, but I'm going to take the 1.5 million because I don't mind leaving a bit of my own cash in because the rate's so good. And because the rate's so good, I can clear probably two, 250 grand off this development per annum every single year. So my dad said to me, as he would, <clears throat> traditional bank saver, um, safe sort of strategy. Well, you want the lowest mortgage anyway. You don't want 2 million mortgage if you can afford to get away with 1.5 million. And I said, that depends, Dad, of where you're coming from. So my dad's coming from the angle of um, low mortgage, low payment, that's better because um, his way of being brought up by his mum and dad, my grandparents, um, was not to have debt um, and not that they were able to because they were, they were very poor. Um, didn't have a lot of money. My grandma came from a family of 10 brothers and sisters. So my dad's adopted some of those beliefs that his way of life of, we shouldn't have debt. Put in the comments box if your parents are like that or maybe you're like that, that uh, debt's a bad thing. A debt's neither good or bad. I mentioned this on video number one. It just depends on what you're doing with the debt. So I give an example of this. So <clears throat> I said to my dad, Let's say, for example, um, you could get a, a hundred thousand pound mortgage for ease of maths, a hundred thousand pound. So 100K, can you see that all right? So let's say you could get a hundred thousand pound mortgage, um, but you only actually needed 80,000. So we only needed 80,000. So the point that I made to my dad today is if we only took uh, 80 instead of 100, it means we've got £20,000 less debt. Now, let's say, for example, that for ease of maths, it cost 10% to have that money. So there's an additional 20 grand. <clears throat> so we can get 100 but we only need 80. So the difference between the 80 and the 100 is 20,000 pound. So let's say, for example, we take the whole 100,000, we've now took an extra 20,000 that we didn't need. And we're gonna say that that 20,000 costs us 10% per annum in interest. So 10% of 20 grand, come on, let's see how quick you are, I'm gonna test you tonight. 10% of 20 grand, first one to answer. Come on, let's go. Quickly, 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 10% of 20 grand is in interest per annum. Who's gonna be first? Two grand, good. So 2,000. So it's costing us an extra 2,000 pound per annum to get 100 grand on the mortgage rather than 80,000. So there's only ever one question you need to ask yourself. Can I make more than £2,000 if I have that extra 20000 Now, let's say with that 20000 we could make a 20% return on investment. If we could make a 20% return on investment, how much would we make? So if we could make 20% with this extra twenty grand. How much do we make? 20% of 20 grand. Come on, who's going to be the first one? 20% on 20 grand. Who's the first one? I'm going to test your maths tonight. People are still answering the old one. 4K. Well done, Michael. So, 4K. So, we can turn that 20 grand here 
That's not very clear, is it? I'm just going to bring it a bit closer. We can make that 20 grand into 4 grand. So what it means now is it's actually costing us £2,000 by not getting the extra 20000 out. So what I'm always asking myself is how can I make my money work hardest for me? So <clears throat> I'm going to show you another example. So I told my dad that and he was a bit sceptical. Um, and he said, renting's dead money. And I said, no, not necessarily. It's dead money. Let me just pull that the right way. It's dead money if you're not using the money wisely. So there's a myth in the UK that uh, renting is dead money, which is not necessarily true. So let me show you why. So my dad, I said to my dad, <clears throat> how much is your house? And he said, about 150k. So 150,000. So I said, okay, if you could get a mortgage um, on that, um, let's say 120,000 pound mortgage, at the moment, what are mortgage rates on houses? In fact, I'm gonna tell you, so it doesn't take too long. So there's people right now, in fact, put in the comments, if anyone's getting uh, a below 2% on their own personal mortgage, because I know there's people getting 1% now, interest rates has, ne has never been as low as what they are right now. So there's people getting um, between 1% and 1.5%. 1 1.09, 1 there you go. Uh, Jacob, 1.09, 1 3%. So what I said was, let's say, for example... We can get a mortgage at 1.5 percent so 1.5 percent on 120 grand is 1800 per annum that's interest so 1800 per annum <clears throat> so what we've done now is on a 150 grand house, which my dad owns outright, he's got no debt on it. He paid it off a long time ago. Um, personally, I would never do that because you can use the money to work harder for you. So because he has no debt on it, he doesn't pay uh, any mortgage and any rent. So on a house like my dad's, you'd be paying around about five hundred, uh, 600 quid a month. So let's say for ease of maths, that's 7,000 a year. So 7,000. So I'm going to talk over these figures. So 150,000 is the value of his house. We're going to say he could get £120,000 mortgage at 1.5% interest rate. The interest on 120,000 would be 1,800 per annum. 1,800 per annum. In rent... It would be around about seven grand a year. So in my dad's head, he's saving seven thousand pound a year because he's paid his mortgage off. <clears throat> but here's how I look at it: if I had one hundred and twenty thousand pound, I would be looking to turn that into a minimum of twenty percent return on investment. Twenty percent. So somebody tell me what twenty percent of one hundred and twenty thousand pound is. Somebody tell me what 20% of 120,000 pound is. Who's going to be the first one? 20% of 120 grand. <clears throat> so let's say now we've got it on a mortgage and we're paying 1,800 in interest. 24K, well done. Who was that? As uh, a few of you have come up together. <clears throat> so 24 grand. So, what we've got to look at now is the difference between that and that. So, in my dad's head, he's saving, he's not having to pay uh, any rent because he owns the house outright. And he's saving this figure each year. 
Whereas if I had that 120 grand in my hand, I'd be making 24,000 with it, which means my dad's actually losing 17,000 pound a year by paying his house off. 17 grand a year he's losing by paying his house off. <clears throat> it gets worse than that. So I'm gonna come back to these figures. So remember again, quick recap. His house is 150 grand. We're gonna say that he got 120,000 pound mortgage, which at 1.5% is 1,800 a year. He's now avoiding the rent because if, because he's paid it off outright, he's got no mortgage, he's got no rent to pay. So he would be paying, if it was rent, seven grand a year. So in my dad's head, I'm saving seven grand a year. But what I would do, if I had all of that 120 and I'm making 20% off it, that would be making me 24 grand a year. So in my, da in my eyes, my dad's losing 17,000 a year by actually paying his own house off. And there's this myth, there's this thing in the UK of you must get your own house and you must pay it off. That's the illusion of making it. <clears throat> so let me show you what else. So let's say we had that 120 grand. Now we know that we could make 24,000 with that money. So my dad in my eyes is losing 17 grand a year. Now, <clears throat> if you're buying investment properties, so let's say we're at the lower end now and we're buying a 60K property. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so let's say it was a 20% LTV. So on a 60 grand house, we'd need 12K. 20% of 60 grand, 12K. Then you'd need stamp at 3%. I know that's changed recently. Um, let's say it's 1800 quid for the stamp, a little bit for solicitors. So in total, we're going to say we need 15 grand to buy um, one, uh, one buy to let property. One buy to let property. So <clears throat> we already know we're losing 17 grand. So if it cost us 15 grand for the deposit and fees for each house, how many of these houses could we buy if we had 120 grand? How many times? How many 15 grands go into 120? First one to answer. Who's the first one? Come on. <coughs> Someone said four. It's definitely not eight. Uh, Brian said eight. That's right. So eight. So we could buy eight properties, eight props. <clears throat> so if we bought eight properties, is what I'm also doing as well. I won't buy anything at all unless I'm buying it below market value. So I teach on my training how to find property below market value. So if I'm buying a 60 grand house, I'd be looking to make... £15,000 below market value. So it now means I can buy eight at 15 grand, <coughs> which is £120,000, what you're also losing on top of your 17 grand a year that the money could be working harder for you. So if I had the 120 grand in my hand instead of having a mortgage, so my dad pays it all off his mortgage. He's now got no rent, no mortgage to pay. He's saving himself seven grand. I would put the house on a mortgage. I'd get the 120 grand. I'd put it into something like these properties that give me a 20% return after all expenses. So they would return me 24 grand. I'd also have the 120 grand and if it was 15k I needed to buy a property for the deposit, the stamp, solicitors, I could buy eight. So I can also make 120,000 with that 120 grand. I can basically double my money. So my dad's now losing 
137,000 pounds, 137,000 pounds.